Tonight on Brumbies TV, anything can happen as childhood friends Scott Co and Alan Alala Toa come into the studio. Nigel R. Wong shares a new charity connection close to his heart. And we recap the weekend of local rugby. And thanks, James, for joining us on Brumbies TV today. Now, it must have felt pretty good at training of the boys after the big win. After a few weeks, we haven't won. Yeah, it's been a pretty tough couple of weeks. We've, uh, we played quite well against the uh, Highlanders and didn't get away with a win, so it was really nice to actually uh, get through and finish off a game against a good bull side. Yeah, of course. And I mean, you started off a game on the hook, then you got to play the whole 80 minutes of a game. How did that feel? Yeah, it was uh, pretty good. <laughs> obviously, it's obviously disappointing when it's through injury, but uh, it was just really good to get an opportunity and play with the team. Yeah, and the Bulls squad is um, quite big, so it's quite great that Brumby's forward kind of took down the defence and made um, the backs have a lot more space to run, did you find? Yeah, they're a very good pack, but the Brums have been a particularly good forward pack for a number of years now, so it was uh, a good match-up. So I guess the lead-off and training towards the informed Bulls, it must have felt good to really win. Yeah, obviously, uh, if you lose a few games this time of the year, it really uh, puts a lot of pressure on you to make finals, so... Uh, just good to get away with a win against a good bull side. Yeah, awesome stuff. Well, let's watch some of the match highlights. The Bulls arrived in Canberra having only lost the one game this season to the Stormers back in round one. The visitors opened the scoring in the fourth minute off the boot of Francois Brummer and the hosts had their own opportunity minutes later. At three all, the Brumbies dominated field position and the possession Looking a fresh side after tough back-to-back -back losses. Christian Leliafano kicks straight from long range to take the lead and then in the 23rd minute extend the lead to six points. The Brumbies were forced to reshuffle their back line with Matt Tamua out injured, giving James Dargaville and Nigel R. Wong an opportunity to start for the first time. R. Wong showed spectacular acceleration to cross for the first try after the break. The Brumbies built pressure by removing mistakes from their game and the Fords continued to dominate at the breakdown. It took the smaller Tomas Kubeli to find a way over the line. Are the Brumbies? No hands out, Blue! The Brumbies now head to Melbourne looking to stay on top. Now, Nigel R. Wong played a full 80 minutes as well. Did you guys talk after the match to share some notes? Yeah, he scored an absolute cracker of a first phase try, which is something uh, us backs really pride ourselves on. So we uh, had a good chat after it and really enjoyed the win together. Great. Now, you're an engineer by trade. Do you feel you can put any of these skills on the field? <laughs> There's not too many uh, very similar at all. I think uh, sitting in a room calculating maths <laughs> problems is uh, very different from right. playing rugby, but uh, no, it's uh, not much of an overlap at all. <laughs> Bit of a dud question there. <laughs> but anyway, um, you take, you're going to Melbourne to take on the Rebels. How are you feeling towards it? Because they've played pretty well. Yeah, they've had a good season as well. They've uh, won some pretty crucial games. So they're obviously just two points behind us. Um, obviously, every Australian derby game is very important. So we're just looking forward to ripping in and having a good game against the, yeah. the Rebels. And of course, for you, are you hoping to get a good match in before bye week? Yeah, hopefully. Uh, when you get the opportunities, you've got to take them with both hands. So I'm just looking forward to getting another run. Thanks, James. No worries. <laughs> Coming up after the break, lots more Brumbies TV. Hi guys, uh, Scott Sear here, live from the change room after our win against the Bulls with Brumbies TV. I've got uh, young Joey Powell here. Uh, mate, a uh, very special day um, today. We, know, uh, we had our mother's uh, names embroidered on our jerseys. Um, mother must have played a big role in your life. Yeah, well definitely her. You know, she always was driving me because I used to play soccer, soccer and rugby, so she was always shuttling between the two when I was young and she always... You know, it's taking me to train, you know, it's supporting me the right way through, so it's really a special occasion tonight. Hi guys, back here again, live with uh, Brumbies TV, um, after our big game against, uh, <laughs> against the Bulls. I've got Alan Dabalalator. Um, mate, uh, you've got your mother's name, Emma, uh, embroidered on your, uh, on your jersey. Um, we all know she's played a, a massive role uh, in your life. It must have been pretty special uh, to, to play with that tonight. Yeah, it was. It was. I think that was the feeling for all the boys tonight. Um, there was just a different feel out there with... Um, now obviously, when you come in, you see your mother's jersey on your name. It's uh, it just means a lot more to you, and um, you know, obviously, huge, huge honour to represent her and, and the family. And it was just good to get the win off the back of two losses. You got a message for your mother, mate, for Mother's Day? Uh, happy Mother's Day, love ya. The 
Hurricanes travelled to Durban to face the Sharks and the New Zealanders applied the pressure early. The Sharks soaked it up for the first half before JP Peterson sparked a second term onslaught, this his second try for the match. The Hurricanes dominated possession but the Sharks scrum was in form, the Sharks outscoring the Hurricanes four tries to one, 32-15. The Crusaders moved to the top of the overall ladder after smashing the Reds in Christchurch. Crusaders winger Johnny McAlai scored the first of his three tries in the fifth minute. Moments later, McAlai found another hole in the Reds' right side defence. The Reds were scoreless in the first half, McAlai bagging his third shortly after the break. The path to victory for the visitors was unclear, but Jake McIntyre saw some space and Campbell Magnay would finish the job. Campbell Magnay will get the Reds first of the evening. The Crusaders were in red hot form, and despite the Queenslanders' persistence, the home side sprinted their way to victory and the top of the table. In other games, the force re-entered the winner's circle in Tokyo. The Highlanders upset the Chiefs in Waikato, while the Waratahs held off the Cheetahs in Sydney. On Sunday, the Blues had a clinical victory over the Kings. A little bit of a shuffle at the top of the ladder. The Crusaders have knocked the Chiefs off their perch. The Brumbies are back on top of the Australian Conference, while the Rebels drop to third behind the Waratahs, and the Kings sit on the bottom. I've had a bit of fun with it, um, with the Wallabies and and the Brumbies. Um, no, I think it's good. I think it gives the, you know, the viewers and um, you know a lot of our fans a bit more of an insight into the team and you know have a bit more of a personal feel and a, and a joke around with it. You know, the show that we're not just all rugby all the time. Uh, there's some chat there about him uh, maybe post footy he can uh, sign up with uh, Fox, Fox Sports, but um, no, nah, <laughs> but he's been good. Uh, obviously, he's the guy to go to in terms of uh, Brum Brum Brumbies TV interviews uh, post, post uh, game and training? Um, well, we grew up in Sydney. Um, I grew up in Lidcombe and uh, Al grew up in Campsie. But our families are very close. Um, Al's the same age as uh, my younger brother, Patrick, and I'm the same age as his older brother, Michael. Um, and yeah, no, it's, uh, we've come along, you know, all together. And, um, you know, my little brother's over in France playing for Stade and, and, and Mike is over at the Crusaders doing well. So, um, yeah, no, we've, our dads played together at the 91 World Cup which was a um, pretty special moment, I guess, for our family. 2016, uh, Scotty and Ali. Yeah, 100%. And, and Paddy and Mike, our brothers. Yep, yeah, they can create their own little <laughs> combination there also. <laughs> but uh, no, I, um, I told my dad we're much quicker, much more skillful players than they are, so he doesn't agree with me, as, as he would. Uh, well, well, when I first signed here, I was excited to obviously be, be part of a team with Scotty in there, I'm someone who I grew up with, and um, now, <laughs> Now to be here and say that we're going to be to, uh, probably together till 2019 is um, something that's very exciting. Um, obviously we're very, very comfortable with each other. I'm always his roommate on tour, so. Yeah, he's good. He listens really well. Um, he's got a few rules that uh, I don't want to go public, but uh, no, no, it's, it's good. We, uh, we know each other really well and uh, we're quite comfortable, which I think is, is a big thing when, you, when you're having a roommate. You know, I make sure I always bring the speaker, I've got the beats going in the room and you know, Alan provides all the entertainment. He's quite a good dancer and a good singer. <laughs> yeah, he, he actually <laughs> is. Um, he's quite modest about it, but uh, you know, um, it's it's really good to sort of see him come, you know, come out of his show in the room. So, um, you know, he, he is quite good at channeling uh, Chris Brown. Um, but um, no, he he does sing a good country song every night. Uh, Tennessee whiskey, uh, Chris Stapleton <laughs> cover is is one of his favourites. So. Um, yeah, look, I mean, uh, Alan's very versatile. He can mix it up. So, um, you know, it's, you never know what you're going to get when you come into the room sometimes. You know, he could be busting out uh, Whitney Houston or, you know, or Michael Bolton, no matter what it is. So, uh, yeah, it's great. I, I very much enjoy having him as a roommate. I think with rugby, you, you know, you can't sort of predict these things, but I mean, like Alan said, it, it's such a special thing to be able to, you know, play rugby with, with someone that you grew up with, you know, um, 
obviously my brother's the closest thing, but Alan and Michael have been a big part of my life for so long. And when I heard he was coming down, I was just as excited, you know, and, you know, really to sort of see his progression, as I said before, has been great. And um, just to hear that he signed for another three years was, uh, you know, was great for me, you know, gave me a lot of peace of mind when I was re-signing as well. And uh, no, nah, no, nah, I didn't. Um, I'd seen, I'd seen um, Scotty sign with the Brumbies when I was still in the school, I think it was. And, um, you know, I was obviously very happy for him. And back then, uh, you know, Super Rugby was so far away from where I was. You know, I thought that that dream was going to be way, way harder to achieve. And, and then to see Scotty do it, it, it just um, kind of opened my eyes a bit. And then uh, when I got the opportunity to come to Brumbies, I was probably, you know, I was, I, was, I was just very excited to be part of a team with a childhood friend of mine or even family, so. Yeah, I guess, you know, people sort of tell you what it's going to be like and, and so forth, but um, until you're sort of a part of it, you don't, you don't really know. And um, it was a one of, you know, one of a kind experience, real special moment. But uh, I think it was really good to have my dad there, just to sort of talk me through and, and remind me of the opportunity at hand. And, you know, just to put your, yourself in the best, um, you know, sort of physical condition and mentally um, as well to say, um, you know, oh, I have an opportunity to play in a, in a World Cup final because, you know, at the end of the day, you may never get that opportunity again. So, um, you know, I'm uh, very humbled that, you know, the Wallabies gave me that opportunity as well. And yeah, always, uh, always. Um, uh, like I said before, family is such a big uh, part of my life and um, he's been there for everything. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if, if things do go sour in my rugby career, they'll always be there, my family and, and my parents um, especially. So um, helping me through and, you know, and they've been there for the triumphs as, w as well. Um, they're quite modest in it, you know, they don't like to boast about it and that keeps me level-headed, um, not just as a player but as a person. Yeah, he hates this story now that I've brought it up because uh, Clarky, Greg Clark, seems to bring it up all the time. <laughs> I think, uh, I'm, like I said, I was pretty special. I was born during the 91 World Cup um, and I was born the week before they were playing Scotland. Manu Samo was playing Scotland in their quarter-final. And um, my old man, being who he is, decided to tell my mother uh, if we win, name him Mun, and if um, if Scotland win, name him Scott. But um, I soon found out later it had to do a lot with because they were playing at Murrayfield as well. Um, Samoans tend to name their kids on you know special events in their life or special places. Um, so um, you know because they were playing in Scotland as well, you know it sort of seemed fitting. Yeah, it was, I was I was very nervous um, heading there, but um, I think I was just very blessed to be in that um, environment. Um, I probably didn't think that I was going to get a look in this year, but uh, you know, yeah, as I said, I'm just, I was just very blessed to be there and, and to be a part of it. Um, for me, more so, just to go there and, and listen, uh, just to see what the coaches have in mind, not only for myself but for the Wallabies as well. Um, I went there and I picked up, a, you know, just a few tips with uh, some like the coaches there with Checo and and uh, Mario. So it was just good. Hopefully. Um, you know, get, get another look in down, down the track. But uh, for me, first and foremost, is trying to perform my best for the Brumbies because then it's uh, only going to help me out from there. Looking ahead to the Brumbies clash with the Rebels tomorrow night. Ten games have been played and the Brumbies have the upper hand. The last time they played was in Canberra in 2015, where the Rebels had their third victory over the Brumbies in wet conditions. The Brumbies have had three wins at Amy Park. Keep an eye out for the Rebels' rising star, Jack Debrazini, as he lines up against the Brumbies' vice captain. Around the grounds this weekend, the Highlanders host the Crusaders. The Reds continue their New Zealand tour in Wellington. The Waratahs welcome the Bulls after their trip to Canberra. And the Sunwolves have another game at home. On Sunday, the Cheetahs are back home from their Australian trip. And the Lions welcome the Blues the Sharks head to Argentina. Really pleased to have Nigel on board as an ambassador for MND Australia. And it's really important that we have people like Nigel able to champion the, um, the needs of people with motor neuron disease. I feel very privileged and honored to be able to uh, join a great uh, organization and team that are working very hard in the fight against MND. My auntie was uh, diagnosed uh, with MND uh, three years ago. Um, like everyone else facing the experience of living with MND, um, she can no longer uh, speak or walk or do most things that we 
take for granted every day. You know, I've been looking for something to be able to um, help other people in need and what better organisation to uh, get involved with than something that has affected um, not only me but uh, my, my extended family um, on a personal level. It's great to have young people on board as well um, and particularly with Nigel with his personal experience of motor neuron disease I think he can really bring um, that personal knowledge and empathy um, to the cause to help us raise awareness um, about the need for care and support and also to raise awareness about the need for research to find the causes, um, effective treatments and ultimately a cure for motor neuron disease. Not only the individual that, that is facing the hardships of MND, but also the families of that individual that is uh, diagnosed. Um, I'd like to you know, not only spread the word in the ACT, but also to the wider uh, rugby community in the world about the troubles that people with MND face and uh, simply what MND is. If I could you know, help raise some funds towards research or the care of those in need, you know, that would make me feel very, very good. The defending premiers played host to Gungahlin and a few fresh faces ran on for the men in blue. Under 20s gun Sam Ross had his second opportunity to start in first grade and he didn't waste it. Just a few minutes into this match of the round here at Phillip Oval. Royals had all the possession in the opening stages of the match at Phillip Oval. Harry Bury finding the line to extend the lead to 14-0. Royals would add another converted try before Gungahlin opened their account. Diving low and Eagles find their way underground. Royals didn't let Gungahlin carry momentum into the second half as scrum half Brent Hamlin caught the Eagles napping. In that moment, Brent Hamlin found a way over the white chalk. Gungahlin hit back within minutes when young Fijian Pat Tuidraki wrong-footed three defenders. Tuidraki, Tuidraki over the line for Gungahlin and they hit back. Royals had a sizeable lead, but Gungahlin wouldn't give up. Mitch Connolly crossed for his first try in his 100th first grade game. And the man is Mitch Connolly in his 100th game for Gungahlin this afternoon, crosses the line under the post. So turning down an opportunity. Gungahlin turned to their maul in the late stages, scoring off the line out twice in the dying minutes. The hosts held on to win 33 points to 27.